This is the story of Private 525 who's buried here, in the British military cemetery of the city of Ramle, in Israel. What sparked my interest about this specific individual was his name. To understand his story, we need to go a bit back in time, to the beginning of the 20th century. At the end of the First World War, an entity called the Ottoman Empire, which controlled wide areas around the Mediterranean Sea, lost and was dismembered. The administration of some of the parts it had previously controlled was then divided between the states of the winning side. This division was called a mandate, and the goal was to assist the communities in those areas until they are able to stand alone. This area was mandated to Britain and was known as Mandatory Palestine. During that same war, in one of its deadliest battles, called the Battle of the Somme, lied a soldier named David in the trenches. Remember David, we'll get back to him a bit later in the video. Harry Potter was born on the 16th of September 1920 and grew up in a town called Kidderminster in England. From a young age, Harry was eager to serve his country, just like his father before him. And so, at the age of 16, he traveled to Birmingham to enlist. If we look at his military papers, we can see that his year of birth is written incorrectly. Harry was so determined to join the military that in order to be drafted, he lied that he was older. And so he was successfully recruited to the 1st Battalion of the Worcestershire Regiment. But at the same time, in Mandatory Palestine, things had become shaky. The Arab community initiated a violent revolt against the British administration, which quickly intensified to quite dramatic proportions. Terror reigned, and many British forces and officials were targeted and assassinated. In September 1938, Harry Potter, only 17 years old, received orders to move to Mandatory Palestine together with the rest of his regiment. Their mission was to maintain the security and order of the public. Harry and his unit sailed from Southampton in England and arrived to the city of Haifa. From there, they were deployed to secure the cities of Hebron and Bethlehem. To do that, they established a new post at a water supply station south of Hebron. They called it the Pumpet. From the Pumpet, Harry's unit used to head out to their various operations. And from the moment they got there, they battled violent rioters intensively and on a daily basis. The problem was that the Pumpet was a very isolated spot and not well secured. And whenever Harry's unit headed out, they left room for others to come in and ambush them when they returned. Now, Harry himself functioned as a driver. Anyone who's been to the military knows the degree of courage and tenacity that's required of combat drivers. And Harry, in the dangerous and daily fightings he took part in, proved himself to be an exceptional driver. So much so that in his unit he was nicknamed Crash Harry. But besides being Crash Harry, what else was Harry Potter like? Whenever I'm studying or researching a person, I like to do a small exercise. And I want to invite you to try it out with me. What I do is I take a picture of that person and through it try to gather qualities and characteristics of theirs. This is a picture of Harry with his best friend in the battalion, Private Holland. If you want to give it a try, pause the screen and try to gather, say, three characteristics about Harry. Write them down in the comments, I'd love to read them. To me, the first most obvious thing is the smile. It's wide and revealing the teeth. And in combination with the eyes and the angle of the head that's a bit tilted, Harry's face radiates some sort of softness and joyous kindness to him. Second is the way he's embraced by Holland. Makes me think that Harry was a good friend, or at the very least, a lovable person. And thirdly, his body posture. Holland sits upright, legs firm, spread apart, looking straight at the camera, embracing his friend. Harry, on the other hand, looks a bit more contained. His legs are enclosed, his right arm is in this somewhat shy position, and his left hand is hidden behind Holland's firm arm. Holland definitely seems like a dominant person, while Harry looks like a shy, wary person, who has something inside him that he doesn't necessarily let show. I might be getting everything completely wrong here, but for what it's worth, it's an attempt to enrich the vastly empty story of Harry Potter, with a bit of human perspective. On the 22nd of July 1939, Harry's company was ambushed by an armed gang on their way back to the pumpet. 
while maneuvering the car under fire, Harry Potter was shot dead by a sniper. Exactly 23 years before the death of Harry Potter, during the First World War, a soldier called David was lying in the trenches of the Battle of the Somme. When the gunfire silenced, David raised his head above the trenches, but it was slightly too early. He was shot flat across his forehead. David was Harry Potter's father. He was the person who inspired Harry to be brave and to stand up and fight for a cause during the most bloody and formative time in the history of the world. David survived this injury, but he carried a scar on his forehead for the rest of his life. Does that remind you of anyone? A few weeks before his death, Harry wrote a letter to his family. In times when cell phones did not exist, you can imagine the profound relief they felt when they received that letter. But try to imagine the sheer shock they experienced when, exactly the day after, they received the news that Harry had died. To keep this video short, I decided not to go over the letter here, but I will put its transcript in the description below, and I'm inviting you to go and read it. It's a very simple letter, and maybe try and gather a few more characteristics about Harry through it. I know I already have. See you next week.